Okay, good afternoon. I have about 1 o'clock. I think I'll get us started here. I want to try to be timely with these uh, webinars. Uh, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. A um, couple things here before we get started. Um, so we record all our webinars. So when we do these, we will record them. If you can't, for future reference, if you want to attend a webinar, because we usually run them on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We took a little break after AEP, uh, but we're going to be back up and running now. So we'll run them on Wednesdays and Thursdays, usually at 1 o'clock. If you want to watch a future webinar but you can't make it, all you really need to do is register. So if you register, we will automatically send a copy, a recording of the webinar to everybody that registered. So the other thing is if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send them in during the webinar, and I will answer them hopefully accurately um, at the end. And so I think with that, we'll get started here. So. What we're going to talk about today is Medicare IRMA. We get a lot of questions about IRMA. Um, we're going to talk about Medicare Part B, the IEP and the SEP, which is confused often, uh, and that those really can be critical for clients. So <clears throat> we're going to just go over that and talk about that a little. Like I said, we should be able to run through all of this in about 20 minutes. So briefly, the agenda is we'll talk about programs that Crow offers very quickly, just to remind people for those who have access to them and, and don't use them. Uh, talk about IRMA, as I said, which stands for Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, for those who forgot. Go over the rules, thresholds, and appeals. Uh, talk about Part B, the IEP for Part B, the SEP for Part B. And then just kind of wrap it up. We're going to throw the general Part B general election period in there and, and some other caveats and things like that as well. But again, all the webinars are recorded, so just register for future reference if you want the recording. And um, if you want to watch all our recordings, I almost forgot. If you want to see all our recordings, uh, they're all on YouTube. So you can just Google YouTube Crone Associates, uh, and they'll all come up. So you'll see them uh, up there. We, when we do a new one, we always add them, and they're all on our, our YouTube page. So, Okay, so briefly on the programs we offer. Uh, again, I go over this just because we, a lot of times we have programs that I think have very good value and people just maybe aren't aware or forgot or we didn't do a good job of telling you about it. So I wanted to touch on them here. We have a lead and marketing program. That's for anything uh, that you do to generate Medicare sales, whether it be leads, advertising, billboards, marketing. If it's something you're spending money on to generate Medicare sales and you have all of your Medicare contracts with us, so your active Medicare contracts are with us, we don't care about well, I should say we'd certainly like to have your final expense and life and annuity, but that's not required. It, to use our lead program, you just got to have your Medicare contracts with us, and it is $500 a month. The way it works is there's no minimums to start, no reduction in commission. You simply spend the money, send us the receipt. For the first six months, we give you 100% reimbursement up to $500 per month. Thereafter, it is 50% reimbursement, but still up to $500 paid to you for a month. So, for example, after six months, you just would have to spend a thousand to get five hundred from us every month, and that's ongoing. And again, no minimums to start, and you simply have to have your active Medicare contracts with us as your upline. We have our T65 seminar program. That's been our biggest thing. We have been doing uh, a lot of those every week now. Uh, we're averaging 65 attendees per seminar. The company we use uh, that's uh, we have a, a very good in-house rate with. Um, they do all the invites. They will help you coordinate the whole thing. Um, and these are seminars offered on an educational basis. The majority of the people will be turning 65, which is great. And they will put on average about 65 people uh, in the seats for your seminar. We can do these uh, countrywide and we can run them all year. So it's a great program. Uh, you can do a month, month after month. We have some agencies that are doing multiple uh, per month. So great program, great way to get people in front of you. If you like to present um, I would recommend that program and would be happy to give you details about it. For those who want to, you know, or are looking for, you know, maybe a better price, we have revamped our, you know, we have you know now for $300 a year. It's actually 302, I think, but I, I rounded down being a salesman. Um, there's no deductible for business that's submitted that's through Crow as the upline, Crow or Pinnacle. For outside business, meaning you got a different carrier with a different upline, then it's a standard $1,500 deductible, which I think you'll see is pretty normal. Uh, it's a great E&O policy. 
Uh, the big difference now is it's available, you know, it'll cover business through Crow and Pinnacle and business outside as well, which is great. We have various options, uh, but I think our price point is really strong. If you have questions about that, give us a call. We offer Connector, Sunfire, and Medicare Bot, uh, all three programs to agents at no cost. Um, if you're not familiar with those, I've done webinars on all three of them. Uh, I won't get into them today, but they're there and they're available and they cost you nothing to utilize. And last thing I'll say is Connector is going to go full voice signature for uh, sometime in September, they're, they're estimating, which will be awesome. They're going to go full voice signature. And just with that, I will mention briefly to you, I'm sure, I don't know if you saw, there is CMS uh, proposed le legislation that says if you're going to interact with a client, a prospect over the phone and make a sale over the phone, all of those calls will have to be recorded. So I know Connector is going to work on that. We have a couple other, other of these programs. I think Sunfire is too. But if that's approved, that is a big change for us. So any, any phone interaction that leads to a sale has to be recorded. Hopefully it won't go through, but we'll see. We have a quote site that a lot of people just don't know about that will quote all other lines of business, annuities, um, final expense, uh, term UL, hospital indemnity. It's all in one place on the Pinnacle site. You can quote all the companies, cost you nothing to use it. It's super handy. Um, and you can use it to get quotes for anything you need. We can help with carriers funding towards marketing and leads. Um, so all you really have to do is talk to me about that, get a proposal. Uh, we can talk to the carriers and we can get you marketing money from carriers. And then lastly, we help with SEO. Uh, so increasing your SEO uh, with Google and all the other search engines. That's uh, the Crow site was homegrown. Our SEO is homegrown. And uh, we can definitely show people interested in that how to do it. Uh, you can do it at little to no cost. It's really just a matter of learning it and doing the work. Okay, enough of that stuff. Let's talk about why you actually came on the webinar today. So Irma. So Irma is, for those not familiar, uh, Irma is additional charges that Medicare uh, puts on Medicare B and D premiums, and they're based on income. It is based on people's modified adjusted gross income. To determine if somebody has, is going to have an IRMA, they look at the income tax from two years prior. So it's always two years behind. So for example, for 2022, they're looking at people's 2020 income tax return and it stays that way. So they recalculate this annually and they just move it forward every year. So in 2023, they're looking at 2021 and so on and so forth. For those who have an IRMA, and, and don't worry, I'll go over the charts in a minute. I did put them on here. Um, well, actually, Lisa put them on here for me, but I'll take the credit for it. Um, the charges are added to the Part B premium. So if somebody has their Part B premium being deducted out of their Social Security check, uh, it's just going to be increased. They'll get a notice saying that they have an IRMA increase. Uh, they don't call it a penalty. It's an income-related monthly adjustment amount. So keep that in mind. Um, but it will be added on to their Social Security deduction for Part B. Or if they're not drawing Social Security and they're paying Medicare quarterly, it'll be added to their quarterly bill. There's also an IRMA for D. A lot of us forget that. I have myself at times. IRMA, that's the same income limits. It affects Part D as well. There's an extra charge. And that is billed separately um, by Medicare when you have a Part D IRMA. Okay. Let me get into that in a minute. So when somebody does have an IRMA based on their income, they get a notice from the Social Security Administration uh, and it tells them about the assessment saying you're being assessed an IRMA and you're going to pay more money. And again, remember, I'll say it a bunch of times, the IRMA is for B and D. So we're going to take a look at the 2022 IRMA income limits for B and D. Uh, and then after that, we'll look at the appeals process. And again, for those who joined us late, we do record these webinars, uh, so we'll send you the recording if you're registered. And if you have questions, just send them into the web webinar, uh, and I will answer them at the end. So here's your first income grid. Uh, part B, you'll see Part D is the same income levels. And remember, it is for individual, or if it's a married couple, it's they calculate it jointly. They cannot, if somebody's married, you cannot pick or choose. If you're married, they're looking at joint income. If you're an individual, it's, it's individual. You know, so you can't, you can't uh, choose one or the other. And as you can see, it shows your monthly premium. So if an individual is making 91000 or less, or a couple's making 182 or less, uh, the monthly premium is 17010 standard Medicare Part B premium. Then it starts going up, as you can see. And I won't read through them all. 
but you can see it shows what they would make for income. So remember, this is 2022 IRMA, but based on 2020 income. If you look at the grid, you'll see how much they're going to pay. So that's not, when it says 238.10, that's not the additional, that's the total. So it's 170 plus the IRMA. They're going to pay a total of 238.10. And as you can see, it tops out at 578.30 now. And from what I've seen, that number is going to be greatly increased. Uh, plan, the, the plan is to greatly increase that number for next year uh, to make it uh, much bigger. But we'll see if that happens or not. But that's where it stands today. So there's the IRMA grid there for Part B. That's the B IRMA. There is your D IRMA. And as you can see, the income amounts are the same. The difference is the penalty. So it's obviously a lot less. So if somebody has a Part D IRMA, they're going to pay their plan premium plus the amounts listed here. And again, it will really annoy clients if you forget to mention this. I, I've done it myself. I just see focus so much on the Part B because that's the lion's share of the money, but you forget about D and it will piss people off. So just remember to talk to them about the IRMA for B and D. Um, if they have one, they have the other because the income grids are the same. So if you have a client that, based on two years ago, has an IRMA, uh, there is an appeal process for certain situations. Uh, as I said, remember IRMA is based on their income two years ago. So what if somebody's income has changed substantially since then? And they can appeal, but they need to have one of the designated life-changing events um, in order to appeal and win. The most common one is a reduction in work hours or loss of employment because if somebody, you know, two years ago they were working, making a lot of money, and now they've retired, uh, their income's gone down a great deal. It wouldn't be fair for them to pay a huge IRMA when they're not making what they made two years ago because it is two years behind. So if they have had a work hour reduction or loss of employment, they can appeal that and they will win. Uh, if they meet one of the, fall into one of the classifications uh, for the life-changing events. And I'm going to give you the, show you the form that, that spells them all out here in a minute. But they would want to use form SSA44. Uh, they would get that form. You can easily just get it online or you can give it to them. And they can call uh, the SSA number and the you know, Social Security Administration number, and they can appeal that IRMA. Um, they do need to make a phone call. Um, is is you know just recently um, I looked as of recently and I didn't see a, an online process for that, so I think they do have to call. Uh, but they can appeal if they meet one of the requirements. Obviously, it can be a a big deal for them and a big difference in how much they're going to pay. So there is lo and behold, there is the form in all its glory. And as you can see, there's you know more than just work reduction or uh, work stoppage. You know, there's there's other um, life-changing events, but they would have to fall into one of these. I mean, if somebody's just saying, well, I just make less now, uh, that doesn't work. Um, but as you can see, um, there's a, a number of them, and if they fall within one of those, they'll, they'll win that appeal. Okay, so that's my IRMA pitch. Um, now let's go to Medicare Part B. And again, if you have questions, just ask them, and I will answer them uh, at the end uh, for us. So Medicare Part B, we'll talk about the IEP first, often confused with the Medicare Advantage IEP. They are not the same, although they have a lot of similarities. The Medicare Part B IEP runs seven a seven-month period. Again, just like an Advantage plan or Part, D, uh, or Part D plan, it runs three months before, the month of turning 65, and three months after. Uh, starts the first of the month you turn 65. That's when A and B starts if you apply. Uh, the exception is for those with a birthday on the 1st. I think this is overlooked a lot. Uh, once in a while, you're going to get somebody who's born on the, their birthday's on the 1st of the month. Um, their start date is going to be the 1st of the previous month. Everybody else with a birthday during the month will be the 1st of the month they're born in, uh, except for with those on the birthday on the 1st. You can apply up to three months before. Um, for those who are collecting Social Security payments, A and B is auto enrollment. So if they're drawing Social Security, uh, they're automatically going to get A and B whether they ask for it or not. Uh, they can defer B. Uh, they get the option to do that. But if they don't say anything, they're just going to get it. Um, for those who aren't taking Social Security payments, it's going to be a manual enrollment. They will not automatically be enrolled. 
they have to do it. Um, the easiest way, in my opinion, if they need to auto, if they need to manually enroll, is to apply in the three month period prior to the month you turn 65. It keeps it simple, and they should do that. I'd strongly push them to do that because if they apply the month they turn 65 or any of those three months after they turn 65, there's a delay in when they get it. We're going to look at that grid next, but they delay the start date um, for their Part B. Um, if they are late applying and they're not necessarily late because they say you can apply three months before the month of or three months after but again have them hit it up and apply the first the uh, three months before it makes life a lot easier because you know then it's going to start the first of the month they turn 65. Um, those not taking social security they can apply uh, they can apply by calling the social security um, number uh, they could call the local social security office if they're back i know a lot of them were closed because of covid i think they're coming back now or what I usually prefer is having them apply online. It's a big link. I put it there for you. I will send you this so you can look at it, or you can just Google um, apply for Medicare online. Um, but there's the link, and I, I find applying online to be easier because um, they tend to sit on the on hold a long time on Social Security when they call them. If the local office is open, though, that's always a good option. So here's the grid for enrolling in Part B. So if they enroll, you know, the three months before they turn 65, they're all good. But as you can see, if they enroll during the month they're turning 65, they're going to get an effective date one month later. And then if they enroll in any of the three months after they turn 65, you can see the delay. There's going to be a delay in the effective date. Um, so again, have them enroll the three months before just to keep things simple. Otherwise, they're not going to get Medicare when they might think they're going to get it. So valid waivers. So what's a valid waiver? Who does and doesn't have to get uh, Medicare A and B? So you can obviously defer A and B, um, but where people make mistakes is interpretation of the waiver. So it's two things. You've got to be actively working and getting coverage through work to delay A, a and B. Your employer also needs to be 20 or more employees. I'll talk about that more in a second. But initially, you've got to be actively working and getting coverage through work uh, to delay A and or B. Or if you have coverage through an actively working spouse, that's a valid reason to delay it. But you need to have both working and coverage. So the example there is if I'm getting coverage through my spouse, she's working, uh, we're using her coverage through work, no problem. However, if I'm working myself, getting coverage through myself, through my employer, no problem. But if I stop working, I no longer have a valid waiver. So if I'm getting coverage through my employer and I stop working, I got to sign up for B right then. Or if I'm getting coverage through my spouse and my spouse stops working, I got to sign up for B then, right then. So that's the example. So what will happen a lot is the person will stop working, but they still have coverage. Maybe they have COBRA. Maybe they have VA. So they're not working anymore. They still have coverage, and they think they don't need B, and they do. You've got to be doing work, both, actively working and coverage through the employer. Now, the 20 or more. So in the past, if somebody was actively working, getting coverage through work, we didn't really think or care about the group size because we'd say, don't worry about it. Um, you know, you don't need to sign up for Medicare B. It's always been a rule that they needed to, but it was never enforced because when you're a group of less than 20, Medicare is primary. The employer plans just kind of ignored that. But now what we're finding is they're enforcing that. So that person with an employer of less than 20, when they turn 65, whether they're working or not, they need to sign up for A and B. Because potentially what can happen is if they don't, Medicare is primary for them, they don't sign up for A and B, they're still working, getting coverage through work. The work plan, the, you know, the insurance company, if they have a big claim, we'll come back and say, we're not covering 80% of this thing because Medicare should be covering it, primary. So really what you need to tell people now is, you know, if you're if you're actively working and you get coverage through work, if you're 20 or more employees, you're good. If it's less than 20, you got to sign up for A and B. And remember, COBRA and VA does not count as a valid waiver because in the COBRA situation, you're not actively working. Here's a lesser known one, TRICARE and CHAMP uh, CHAMP is or CHAMP VA is not a valid waiver um, if you have free Part A Medicare. It's not a valid waiver for B.
I know a lot of times I and other people think it is. It isn't. So we'll talk about the Part B SEP. So you can sign up for Medicare Part B with a special election. Special election is a different time frame. That's uh, the eight-month period from the time you or your spouse stop working or lose coverage. So coverage is lost or you stop working, you've got an eight-month window to sign up for Part B with a special election. Here's a really crazy one. You can't use an SEP to sign up for Part B during your IEP. So, for example, somebody's turning 65. Remember, they got a seven-month IEP to sign up for Part B. And maybe, you know, it's the month after they turn 65 and you think to yourself, well, they're losing group coverage. I'm just going to use the SEP. The SEP won't work in that seven-month period. You've got to wait for it to end before you can use the special election for loss of coverage or retiring. I've learned that the hard way. I've tried. It doesn't work. Um, so when you can use the SEP, though, you use form CMS L564, Request for Employment Verification, or re Employment Information. I call it the Employment Verification form. You also need form CMS 40B. Uh, that's the actual form to enroll in Medicare B. The application for this is online. It is a huge URL, so I didn't put it on there because you'd spend all day trying to write it down. Um, so really just easier if you want. We have a, a blog on this. You can Google Medicare Delayed Part B Enrollment Online Crow. If you just Google that, it'll come up. So that's what I would, uh, the easiest way to find the Delayed Part B online application. If you try to just Google it, for some reason, it's very difficult to find. So just Google that with the crow at the end, and you should be able to find it easily. It'll be the first thing that comes up. All right, so the Medicare general enrollment period. So let's say somebody missed their Medicare A and B IEP. Hopefully they have an SEP for retirement or loss of coverage, but let's say if they screwed up and they missed that too. Well, then their only choice then is to enroll in Medicare Part B through the Medicare general enrollment period. And every year you apply through that from January 1st to March 31st. The Part B will start July 1. So that's how it works. January 1 through March 31st, July 1 start date. And keep in mind, um, you're going to have a 10% penalty for every 12-month period they didn't have B that they should have. 10% tacked on. So if they went 24 months, they're going to have a 20% penalty. Three years, they're going to have a 30% penalty. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll get somebody who maybe is on a union plan or a group plan where they retired a few years ago. They're over 65. They retired. They're still, they still have health insurance. They don't sign up for Part B. They don't worry about it. And maybe a year or two goes by and their insurance goes away. And they call you and say, hey, i got to get Part B. I need to get on a Medicare plan. They've missed their IEP and they've certainly missed their SEP. The only thing they can do is apply through the general enrollment period and they're going to wait till the following July. You know, So if they call you in June of 2022, with this situation, you're going to have to say to them, I'm sorry, but the only time you can apply is January 1, 2023 through March 31, 2023 for a July 1, 2023 start date. If somebody is making HSA contributions, they cannot have Medicare A and B. So if somebody's 65 or older, they're actively working, getting coverage through work, they can't, sometimes they might think to themselves, well, I'll just get A only, I'm not paying for it, I'll just waive B. That's fine, but if they're making HSA contributions, they have to, they can't have either. They got to waive both A and B, which they can do, but just be aware of it. And the reason they say that you shouldn't have made HSA contributions within the last six months is because for people who delay A and B for valid reasons, you know, working and getting coverage through work, when they enroll in A and B, they, Medicare is going to retro that Part A back up to six months. And that's why they say no HSA contributions within six months of having A and B. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, good. Uh, went a little over, about 24 minutes. Um, but I really appreciate everybody joining me today. Hopefully that made sense. I tried to simplify it. Um, you know, just uh, put some things in there that tend to be forgotten or misinterpreted. Um, we will send out an email. Uh, we're going to get our webinars going again on Wednesdays and Thursdays. We'll send an email out with the two topics and the invitation link uh, for next Wednesday and Thursday. 
Uh, remember, we record all these webinars, so if you registered, you'll get the recording. Even if you didn't attend, you know, you registered, you'll get the recording. And now let me see if I can answer some questions. Let's see here. All right. So. Here we go. Okay. Uh, what is and isn't included towards income for IRMA? Okay, it's um, modified adjusted gross. So mo basically, modified adjusted gross income, which I'm not an accountant, but if you look at modified adjusted gross, really the only thing that comes out of that is um, like retirement contributions, like a SEP, 401k, IRA. Um, uh, let's see. And then I think that's the only question we had. Oh, let's see. For the eight-month window after they lose employer coverage is the 63... Hang on. So, for the eight-month window after they lose employer coverage is the 63-day penalty applied for not having Part D? Yes, it is. Good question. So um, somebody turns... Well, I mean, not always. Let me answer that question. So I'll, I'll rephrase it. So somebody turns... They're 66... Uh, they lose, they suddenly lose group coverage, um, or they retire, let's say, and they sign up for Medicare Part B four months later. Um, they have 63 days to get Part D coverage, but COBRA is usually credible D coverage, so that would count, for example. So if they're taking COBRA, that counts as a valid Part D waiver because it's credible coverage, or if they still are on the employer plan, or if they took an individual plan, if they've got any kind of plan with credible D coverage, then that's a valid waiver for D. But answering your question on its basis, yeah, if they sign up you know, for Part B four months after they lose coverage and they've had no coverage for four months, then they're going to have a Part D penalty. Good question, by the way. Uh, let's see. Is the IRMA adjustment for each member? Um, so if a husband and wife are both eligible for Medicare and, and have in extreme income, they both pay the IRMA, yes. IRMA would be applicable, assuming they're both 65 or older, and have Part B each, they'd each pay the IRMA. So if the couple, that grid I showed you, if the couple falls into one of those grids, they're both paying that. Good question as well. I'm going to hang in there for a minute and see if we have any others. Um, okay. Part A is free. Doesn't it still come automatically? Yes, it does. But you can, you have the option. Well, not automatically. Let's go back for a minute. Part A is free. If you're not drawing Social Security, A is an automatic. If you are drawing Social Security, they're going to give you A and B. So A is automatic on people drawing Social Security. If they're not, then it's not. They have to enroll. Good question. Uh, let's see. What is the 10% penalty of? Okay, I think you mean, how do they, what do they base it on? They base it on the standard Part B premium. So when I said there was a penalty of 10%, that means the people paying 170, 170, 10, they're paying a 10% more than that. That's their penalty. They go two years, it's 20% of the 170. So that actually can go up every year because is the, you know, obviously this year we had the biggest Part B premium jump in history. Um, so because of that, um, you know, every year if that Part B premium goes up, that penalty is a percentage of that premium. That'll go up as well. It's a good question as well. A lot of good questions. Let's see if we got anything else here. Okay. Can you speak to the coordination of benefits for COBRA participants who are under age 65 but then become Medicare eligible? Not sure I follow the question completely. Uh, can you speak to the coordination of benefits for COBRA participants who are under the age of 65 but then become Medicare eligible? Well, I mean, so I guess once they become Medicare eligible, they'd sign up, you know, they're eligible, they'd sign up for Medicare. So there really wouldn't be a coordination issue there um, because I potentially, you know, they're on COBRA, they turn 65. They're going to get Medicare and then drop the COBRA. I mean, it wouldn't make sense financially for them to keep the COBRA. Um, anyway, feel free to check in with me offline if I'm not answering your question. How far back do they count penalties? 
You know, that's a great question. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'll pretend like I know the answer. I'm pretty sure it's 2006, as you, asked in the, as you stated in the question. I think you're correct about that. I think the penalty does bait, date back to 20, 2006. Good question. Just if you don't mind, Mitch, don't ask questions again that I don't know the answer to. Thanks. Um, I'm joking. Uh, let's see. It looks like that's all we have. Um, well, anyway, I think that's it for questions. Uh, if you have any more, certainly just feel free to call us. Um, send us an email. I uh, would look forward to talking to anybody. I'd be happy to send you information on the various programs we offer to agents. And I hope to see you on future webinars. Again, we'll record this and send it out. And uh, really appreciate everybody uh, attending today. Thank you. Have a great day.